Hello everyone, welcome to Newcastle Fans TV. My name is Will Dixon and sorry I haven't made a couple of videos in the past few days because I'm in Mallorca and uh, I mainly make transfer videos and it has been changing every other minute. Frankly, it, it's almost impossible to keep things up to date and to keep it all rolling and it's just absolutely you know, crazy, crazy window. So we've seen Riviere, we have Simpson De Jong leave the club. But, many more players still have to leave. Grant Hanley, seemingly the next one out the door. Apparently in the next 24 hours, Newcastle want this guy gone. And Norwich City are accredited with an interest, as are Fulham, both of the championship. Um, I think Grant Hanley at the minute is fifth choice centre-back. Completely makes sense to get him off the wage bill. He'll be taking up a lot. Um, and hopefully we can shift him on very, very quickly. Jack Colback has been talked about with a move to Hull City on loan. I think the stumbling block with Colback is that he actually has quite high wages. So... It's difficult to get him uh, off the books, but uh, again, hopefully, uh, if we do that, I mean, any funds at the minute would be uh, would be helpful because it seems we have nothing. Uh, also, Ashcroft Lazar, four clubs interested in him: Betis, Genoa, Bologna, Atalanta, uh, three Italy, one Spain. Hopefully, somebody will take him. And also, Masali Hadara, another left back. Uh, is linked to Standard Liège in Belgium. I mean, it's just unbelievable. And that's not even the whole list of players. You've got Ad Cruel. Apparently, Yassin Ben Armani has been looking to be shifted out. And uh, Henri Saive as well, despite the fact he's been involved in match day squads. They've been talked to be shifted out as well. I mean, we really need to get the squad down to 25. But the other goalkeepers we've been linked with, such as Wayne Hennessy, I mean, I don't see the point, really. I would rather just have Woodman as the third choice. Um, although it would be beneficial for him to have game time. Um, there's no point in having Woodman shipped out on loan if we're only going to get a goalkeeper in who's not as good as Elliot and Darlow. I only really see it worth our while if we actually get an upgrade. And as it currently stands, it doesn't seem like that's going to happen. So I think we're going to have to leave the goalkeeper thing for now. Um, in terms of left-backs, Kennedy was meant to have happened three weeks ago. Um, and uh, there was all these things coming out that it was a, a point of standoff between Conte and Chelsea, being like, you know, this player who we expelled from our tour is on our bench. I mean, that desperate need of players, and they are because they don't actually have their English quota. And to help with that, they're going to sign Alex Oxlade Chamberlain from Arsenal, seemingly in the next couple of days after a fee was agreed of £40 million, which should pave the way for Kennedy to come to Newcastle on a season long loan deal. I think that one is probably the most likely. The other one we have been linked to is an Argentinian left back from Estudiantes called Nicholas Tagliaferri. I think that's it, please. Um, I might have completely got that wrong. Um, apparently, we are uh, very strongly linked to this guy um, from uh, some other media sources um, outside of England. They've said that we have negotiated a fee of around about £4 million. Of those two, I would rather sign Kennedy, who has played in the Premier League, um, and we kind of sort of know what he's like. Uh, apparently, this Tagli Ferry guy, he's an attacking left-back, so he again, fits the bill, but... It's always a risk, especially coming directly from South America. Um, it's such a different transition from that to the Premier League. So, yeah, maybe Kennedy would be the better option. Uh, other players, one that I really liked was Dennis Preyas, that we were linked to uh, play for Sampdoria um, as a number 10. Ready-made number 10, fantastic technical ability, came from the same academy as Kevin De Bruyne. Uh, Thibaut Courtois and Christian Benteke, um, very, very highly rated when he was at Anderlecht, said to be, you know, set for stardom. He's at 23 now, he's at Sampdoria in Serie A. Uh, apparently we sent scouts out there to Italy, um, and apparently it would have taken a few of around about 18, yes, 18 million pounds to take him. Uh, but he, set, he seems set to stay in Serie A. So I think this one is more of... Um, the fact that we will not be able to sign him, and that's why we might only be getting two players now over the line. Strikers-wise, we've been linked to all sorts. We've been linked to this Iceland guy who, Kvartason, I kind of want to go with that. Um, again, incredibly difficult to pronounce. This guy has played in Sweden, he's played in Switzerland, he's played in Israel. He currently plays for Maccabi Tel Aviv in Israel, managed by none other than Steve McLaren. This man will just not leave my life, will he? Um, at eight million pounds. This guy is actually incredibly pro prolific, but this is in Israel. Um, rather like the Argentinian league, I'm not sure uh, the level we're working with here, but apparently an eight million pound uh, deal would get him to Newcastle. Like Remy as well, a return for Loic Remy. Would you like to see that? Um, apparently he might be going to Claudio Ranieri 
uh, in France with uh, Nantes. I think that's the team that he manages. Um, uh, much down the packing order at Chelsea. I personally, I wouldn't be that keen on signing him. Definitely a couple of years ago, but not right now. Um, I don't think he's played um, in the last couple of years. But uh, the other one, and this one I actually do quite like, if it were to happen, but I, it might be unlikely, is Divock Origi on a loan deal because at Liverpool, they've told him we need you to get playing regular game time. So they're looking at a loan move. There was a story that came out because they're looking at Thomas Lamar that part of their deal would be that Lamar goes to Monaco on a season-long loan deal. But Newcastle are accredited with having a definite interest in Divock Origi. And personally, I think he's one of the most underrated strikers in the Premier League, he's got pace, he's got power, great finisher, can get past a man, great physical player as well, can head. Um, incredibly impressive in that Europa League tie, if you remember, against Borussia Dortmund. Apparently, we're now open to offers for Dwight Gale. So, of all the strikers that we had, we were all thinking Gale is a definite stay. Mitrovic, if any of them are going to be going, is going to be Mitrovic, um, as well as Murphy. And Dwight Gale, Leeds are apparently looking for their replacement for Chris Wood after he went to Burnley. So again, massive transfer marrying arounds, as you can see. Apparently, they've been quoted 18, yes, 18 million pounds for Dwight Gale if they want to get him. What do I think of that? Well, um, <laughs> hmm, I'm not sure. The problem is that I think at the minute it's too close um, to the deadline. If we got 18 million pounds in, we could get a very good striker for that amount of money. Or could we? Could we? That's, the, that's, that's one thing. It's, you know, could we actually get a decent enough replacement? I mean, Gale, in the couple of games that he's played, hasn't looked great. But I put that more down to the system, frankly, because the, the main criticism of Dwight Gale at Crystal Palace, I remember this, was the fact he wasn't played with another striker. If he was, he'd be feeding, um, playing off the last shoulder and having a big man like Christian Benteke or Alexander Mitrovic in there. He'd be much more effective. Up on his own against Tottenham and a very stubborn Huddersfield, he really did struggle. So, I don't know. I just feel it's a bit too close to let go of a 23-goal a season in the Championship. Uh, fair enough. But um, it, it, it's a massive risk if you were to let Gale go. Unless we had somebody lined up that we knew was like a solid performer, like if it was a Jovetic kind of player, I would understand it. But... I'm not so sure. Let me know what you think about that, because I think that's very, very interesting. There were a couple of stories that Gale might be the one to go. I don't know. But yes, if you've been watching Newcastle Fans TV, make sure you keep looking at the channel and looking at our Twitter and Facebook for updates as the transfer window draws to a close on Thursday. It's going to be very, very interesting to see how it all transpires. Make sure you subscribe to the channel, like this video. I've been Will Dixon, this has been Newcastle Fans TV, and I will see you later. Bye.